Hello guys, my name is Matthew and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can make the fastest integrations between two or more apps in Zapier. First things first, we want to go to the zapier.com and we are greeted by our workspace that we need to create account to. Once we're in here, you can check the pricing and uh, basically scroll down to discover all about integrations, all about uh, all about Zapier itself and how and which application you can integrate in Zapier. You can also sign up for free. You can see there are more than 3000 apps that you can integrate between each other. You can see some uh, demo clips and also uh, most importantly, you can get a 14 day free trial to actually discover if the Zapier is a solution to your problems uh, for integrations or you want to move to some other application because uh, there are more than just Zapier, for example, Automate and so on. But I find uh, Zapier personally maybe the most easiest one. As you can see, I already got my account going. So what we want to do, we want to go to the top right corner of our screen and click on log in. Straight away, you can log in with Google, Facebook or with your Microsoft account. But I'm going with uh, the account that I created just for this reason. Password is already in. And once I click connect or log in, I'm greeted by the dashboard of uh, Zapier itself. As you can see, I already made uh, some integrations. So there's my history uh, that I can jump straight into. For example, this is Trello and Gmail. But uh, if you want to basically start with trying out the new app or as they say, create your own workflow, uh, you can start by connecting first app with another app. It's the, maybe the fastest way how you can make integration in Zapier. So you can try by going like Asana, for example. And as you can see, uh, there's a first suggestion. If you meant Asana, pick Asana. And now you can integrate it with, for example, Gmail like this. Now uh, we get the triggers, but I'll come back to this a bit later. I want to show you the other features of our workspace and not just to jump into integrations themselves. If you want to uh, personalize your account at Zapier, you want to go to the top right corner and click on your icon. This is just my name, but if you want to go, uh, you can click on settings you can uh, manage your email notifications, uh, set the weekend summary, uh, activity summary. I should go with never because I'm not really into those weekly summaries and I'm never checking them. But it's nice to have them if you, if you find it useful. Alerts, failed actions and so on. Uh, this I recommend to have always on. Now, advanced, for example, two-factor authentications or authorized application and so on. Here you can also delete your account if you don't want to continue uh, using Zapier as your automate program. Data management, as you can see, you can delete them or export them. Billing uh, comes in hand when you run out of 14 days uh, free trial and also members, you can use Zapier for Teams. So that's very useful. Now, uh, back to Zapier itself. As I said, here we have uh, the fastest way to, to make the integration, but I don't recommend using this way. I'll show you later which one, in my opinion, is the best one. Straight away, let's go to the second option we are going to ignore create zap for a while. So zaps, as you can see, uh, once you are into integrations and you already made a few, 
uh, you can jump straight to zaps and trace them back. For example, those are unnamed because there's uh, no name between them, but let me find some that I actually named, but as I said, uh, I made tons of integrations through Zapier. That's why I can uh, really give you an advice on uh, how the Zapier works. And now you can trace back uh, your, your integration by uh, picking the name. For example, I named one Airtable to Jira. So as you can see, if I go with filter zaps and I'll press Airtable, for example, it will uh, spit basically all the Airtable integrations that I ever made in Zapier when Airtable was the first app or the trigger app. So it's very useful to name your apps so you can trace them back. So that's just Airtable, but I believe I named like hundreds of them. We can check it back if there's more than just Airtable. There's a Trello also. So for example, if you want to trace back the Trello uh, integrations that I made, we just write down Trello and you can jump back into the integration between Trello, for example, Notion, uh, Clockify, and so on. My apps are providing us with all the apps that I ever made integration with. For example, uh, Active Campaign, Equity, and so on and so on. One of the, yeah, let's go with uh, Active Campaign. I made seven apps yesterday. Now you can check by just basically clicking on Active Campaign and View Zaps. You can basically see all the Zaps that I made by using uh, Active Campaign as a trigger app. We can go always back. We can basically check the Gmail. I made three with the Gmail, Google Forms, Yacht Form. For example, MailChimp, I presume it's very interesting. And now you see all the, all the zaps that I made using MailChimp as a trigger. Straight away, we can go uh, one a bit lower, zap history. Uh, now you can uh, check all the zaps you made past 30 days. There's uh, no zap for me because I never actually I never actually saved one because I use them just to show you guys how are how we should make the zaps using Zapier but there's all uh, the zaps you can also uh, write there like Trello or Gmail or so on and so on it's completely up to you uh, all apps all folders and so on explore you can check for, uh, find ways for Zapier to handle repetitive tasks in the apps you use every day. So more integrations you can go back. We are not going to use it today. We can explore more apps and more features. Uh, here you can get help. And also the last option is upgrade plan. So as you can see, right now we are using the free option which will provide you 100 tasks per month. But if you are going to uh, pay like 25 per month or 17 annually, you'll get 70, 750 tasks per month and so on and so on and so on. But right now, let's jump back to, uh, let's uh, jump back to integrations. Straight away, if we want to make this integration work, between two or more apps, we want to go to the top left corner and click on Create Zap. Once we click on Create Zap, we get redirected straight away. So here you can name your Zap that you're about to uh, about to create. 
uh, for example, let's go with Slack to HubSpot, for example. There's nothing, nothing hard. Uh, it's pretty common combination. You just press enter and right now it's back in the system. So anytime you want to jump back to Slack or HubSpot integration, you, you can just find it back in my apps. So straight away, we want to start with a trigger app. The trigger app will start with Slack as the first app that we want to trigger. Trigger event, as you can see, those are the trigger events that are going to affect our second app. It will affect HubSpot. So let's go with, for example, new user. When the new user is created in Slack, it will affect uh, some activity in HubSpot. We hit continue. Now we have to log in to our Slack account that I've created uh, back in the days. So we just basically log in there. We hit continue. And now we can test our trigger between, between Slack and Zapier. But since we are having this uh, uh, green, let's say likes, uh, we know it's uh, good to go. So we don't have to test the trigger. We can jump straight to second action uh, where we are going to address the second app that's, gonna to, that's going to be affected by uh, Slack. Let's go with HubSpot then, because I already named it like that. HubSpot is already integrated. Action event, we yet again have to pick manually, but I'm going with the first one create a deal. So when new user uh, appear in a Slack, uh, it will create a deal in HubSpot. I know it's not the perfect option. We can go by add contact to list. That's more, that's more like it. Add contact to list in HubSpot. We hit continue. And all we have to do now to finish or to make this integration work is to sign in to HubSpot. And what you did, you basically made the integration uh, happen. So once we click there, it's all set and ready. You can always jump to settings. You can update it to the folder, add a description and so on. You see new user in Slack, but I'm not using this sidebar very often. That's about it, guys. I hope you found this video help helpful. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.